Now that we've set up Live's preferences and how to look at the interface and the various elements that make up a Live set, let's go ahead and get into the good stuff here. We're going to take a look at clips. In this movie, we're going to look at both audio clips and MIDI clips, which are the basic building blocks of Live sets, especially when you're working in the session view. I have a folder here containing two Live clips that I've created. One is an audio clip, and I can preview it by clicking on it in the browser, and go ahead and add it to my Live set and a drum clip, which is a MIDI clip, and I'm going to add that to my live set by dragging and dropping onto a MIDI track. I'm going to double click the clip here, and now you can see the various elements that make up the clip view. I have my clip box, launch box, sample box, and my envelopes box. And over here we have the sample display showing the clip's waveform. An audio clip can be as simple as an AIFF file, a WAV file, or in Ableton Live 7, a REX file, but it can also contain lots of other information as well, and that's what you're seeing down here. This clip has some transposition information, some volume information, it's got a color chosen for it, and I can even change the tempo. There's a whole wide range of information that I can change and save as part of my clip. And we'll be looking at all of these in detail in the Working With Audio Clips movies. But let's say I've made some changes and I want to save this clip. I just go ahead and drag it onto any folder. Give it a name. Hit the Enter key and I've saved my clip. Now, when you're saving an audio clip, you're only saving the information about the audio. You're actually not saving the audio itself in the clip. The audio itself is saved in the original WAV file or AIFF file or REX file, wherever that is in your hard drive. So if you use uh, one of those files to create a clip and then you move it, the clip won't know where to find the original file. So keep that in mind when you're creating and saving audio clips. Along with the information that you create in the clip view or alter in the clip view, an audio file can also contain an effect, or a multiple effects. In this case, the audio clip contains a filter delay. I could add more effects and save the, to the audio track, and then save the clip, and the effects will be saved along with the clip information. Moving on to my MIDI clip. Again, I'm double-clicking it to view the clip in the clip view, and you can see that there are some differences here with the audio clip and the MIDI clip. For one thing, a MIDI clip contains both the MIDI information that's used to trigger the, the instrument, and it also contains the instrument that's being triggered. In this case, the instrument also contains some effects, which are saved as part of the clip, and I can include even more effects and save them as part of my clip. Again, I have the option to save a number of things, though as you can see, the options are a little bit different, and we'll be looking at all of this in detail as we look at MIDI clips specifically in another movie. But again, I have the option to change the color, I can change launch mode information, I can adjust the tempo, and I can add all kinds of pitch bend, volume, and other control envelopes to alter my clip and save it. And again, saving a MIDI clip is as easy as dragging it onto any folder, typing a name, and hitting return or enter to save it. Unlike audio clips, all of the information that's necessary for the MIDI clip is saved within the clip, so you don't have to worry about referencing instruments or other audio files. So that's a quick look at audio and MIDI clips in Ableton Live, and in the following movies we'll take more in-depth looks at both audio clips and MIDI clips.